Welcome to Picking Bones. Today we're going to talk about the moon landing. There's been a lot of news coming out about the moon landing lately because it's the 50th anniversary of those Apollo missions. And so I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at some of the stories we've seen coming out. This is a story that's uh, quite interesting. A uh, man claims to have the original moon landing videotapes. Uh, he says that NASA sold him to them, uh, sold them to him for two hundred eighteen dollars uh, back when he was an intern. He got all these tapes, uh, sold most of them so that they could be recorded over and reused. But he held on to certain ones that he thought seemed important. Um, in two thousand eight, NASA says that they were really starting to search to try to find the old tapes of the moon landing. And uh, so this guy got in contact with him, but evidently he and NASA couldn't come to an agreement about what to do with the tapes, whatever that means. Yes, indeed. He says Mr. George was put in contact with NASA about the tapes, but ultimately no agreement could be reached about what to do with them or even how to view them. So if I thought NASA was really interested in finding these tapes, so why, why didn't they, why didn't they get the tapes? The tapes did sell just very recently for almost two million dollars on private auction here, and I can't find anything about who actually won the auction. So, will the world ever see whatever is on these tapes? I don't know. I doubt it. Um, so this. This is an older story, back from 2009, where NASA admits that they did uh, destroy all the original tapes. Um, yeah, they said that they couldn't find any of the original recordings of the 1969 moon landing. Uh, the good news is that they found where they went. The bad news is uh, they were all magnetically erased and reused to save money. Yeah, let's... Let's erase the most important historical event. That's, those aren't relevant. Yeah, the, the, the supposedly like most genius organization in the world, just these guys are so dumb that they erased all the tapes. Okay, they say the tapes are not in the system, but we're certainly open to finding them. Well, why didn't you buy this? NASA doesn't have $2 million? Like, how much did the guy ask for? Like, you expect me to believe NASA doesn't have $2 million? That's retarded. Okay, here's another story. Uh, this came out in 2017 where a bunch of tapes, hundreds of data reels were found. And uh, let's see what happened to them. Uh, so all these, all these things were found. Okay, uh, this man died and his... One of his friends told NASA about it, wanted to do the right thing, so he told NASA, hey, this guy had all these old audio recordings, or video recordings, and, uh, you know, some of them connect to certain notable missions. Um, many of them were unlabeled as well. Uh, in 2006, NASA confessed that it likely reused the tapes containing the iconic moonwalk uh, and even today, that blunder looms over the agency. Yeah, that blunder. Yeah, just a mistake. So Motherboard confirmed that after NASA acquired all of these data tapes, they were subsequently destroyed. Huh. NASA's Goddard, uh, Goddard Supply and Equipment Management Branch told me today that all magnetic tape data reels were picked up by the agency, Recycler, on... 9216 and destroyed by 9616. What? NASA says salvaging their data would have been very costly, according to one of their archivists. Even then, there was no guarantee that anything could be recovered but from the reels, which were described as severely moldy. You're telling me NASA doesn't have the resources to try to restore these potentially historic videotapes they just so they just destroyed them <laughs> see this is purple because purple is the retard alert color and uh yeah we've got a severe retard alert here like you have to be a complete idiot to believe this shit 
All right. Here's a story that just came out yesterday where the NASA chief admits why Apollo 11 era tech can't land on the moon. Apollo technology from the 1960s is no longer good enough to land on the moon today. Here's an interesting clip from uh, Don Petit, NASA astronaut. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology and uh, it's a painful process to build it back again. But Oh, so we, so we went to the moon and then we were like, you know, let's destroy all the records. Let's destroy all the technology we used to do this. Because we don't need it anymore. That's, so we might as well destroy it, right? Right? Am I right? So dumb. Here's, here's as we get further clips. away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen belts, an area of dangerous radiation. But Orion has protection. Shielding will be put to the test as the vehicle cuts through the waves of radiation. Sensors aboard will record radiation levels for scientists to study. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We have to solve the challenge of the Van Allen belts for Orion, the new ship. Didn't we already figure out how to get through the Van Allen belts? I thought it wasn't a problem. Three. Okay. Um, yeah, just a few more clips saying the same thing, basically. There's also this, uh, the moon rock given to Holland by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin is a fake. It says that uh, it's given to William Dries, the former Dutch leader, on a tour by Neil Armstrong and uh, Michael Collins and Buzz Aldrin. So, so he got it directly from th these astronauts, and it's fake. The geologist says it's a, it's a nondescript, pretty much worthless stone. And there's another story, um, but this one won't open. We'll see. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore for some reason. But it's NBC News. And it says one of the moon rocks in a museum is petrified wood. Why, is, why are these moon rocks fake? What's up with that? It, you know, if we went to the moon, why are we giving out fake moon rocks? So, uh, yeah. Buzz Aldrin had this interview where he said he didn't deserve fame for Apollo 11. And, uh, yeah, at least he was honest about that. You know, NASA was founded, you know, uh, two of the key figures in the history of NASA are Jack Parsons. Jack Parsons was a, a, cult in, a cultist. Uh, he was a Satanist. It says uh, Parsons came to believe magic, a force that he felt could be explained through quantum physics. And Jack Parsons, uh, yeah, he tried to summon the Antichrist with uh, L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, not a cool guy. He And he's the guy that created JPL. Sometimes they call it, instead of Jet Propulsion Labs, they call it Jack Parsons Labs. Just named after the guy. Um, and so thinking of how he viewed magic and science as related, let's check out this clip from Thor. Your ancestors called it magic. And you call it science. Well, I come from a place where they're one and the same thing. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. Except not. This is just occultist propaganda. And that's how they they view occultism. Like To them, it is science. Look at alchemy. Um, it was a science. So along with uh, Jack Parsons, there was also the famous Nazi... Werner von Braun, here's right on the CIA's site, talking about Operation Paperclip, how they brought Nazis to uh, work on NASA and other things. And yeah, so Werner von Braun was one. We also had uh, Kurt Debus, another Nazi, and Dr. Hubertus Strughold. These were all Nazi figures who played a key role in NASA's history. Here he is himself, Werner von Braun, former Nazi who launched our space programs. So really, you have to just take NASA at their word. They say that they have destroyed the technology and destroyed the tapes. But, uh, but yeah, we went to the moon. Who would question that? Why would you question that? 
you you have to take the words of the of this organization that was founded by a Satanist and a Nazi. Um, hmm. The most trustworthy types of people in the world. Uh, and really, this makes me think of this this quote, where direct CIA director William Casey said, "We'll know our disinformation program is complete." when everything the American public believes is false. And he said this at a meeting with President Reagan. This is the person who reported it, Barbara Honiger. And uh, yeah, they were just doing uh, like, kind of talking about what they expected from their agencies. And this guy just lays it out, what, what the true purpose of the CIA is, or one of the true purposes anyway. It's to propagandize the public. It's to create a false view of the world. And so we have some of these massive events in history, such as the moon landing and uh, a certain day in September. And like people's view of history is entirely warped by these false tellings of events and or, or even completely fabricated events. That's what it's all about. It's, it's about creating a matrix of lies. So, uh, when are we going to go to the moon again? <laughs> That's a stupid question. So, have a great day, guys. See you next time.